let's generate a villain using the tables in the fifth edition of the Dungeon Master's Guide. Welcome to my channel. I focus on tabletop role-playing games, video games, and science fiction. Pages 94, 95, and 96 of the Dungeon Master's Guide give some complex looking tables about how to create a villain. So I decided to take my NPC script and update it. So let's see what this is what the output looks like. Now if you don't want to get into the technology about this is about the time you just will go download the download the source code and go and I'll be talking this is going to get relatively technical. So villain 5e the script will generate it it does or this is a person named Khan who's a human female and the key is we've got three new th three new attributes generated for villains which is different from NPCs. So their objective and scheme is mayhem, trigger a natural disaster, and their method is confidence scams with fine print, and the villain fails when an ancient enemy forgives its past actions. But if we run another one, we generate a different Obadiah, human male, and so on, and we get a different set of flaws and everything else. Um, so that this is the objectives and schemes. So we can create this. And just like with the NPC, I can specify generate three of them. And it will generate three in a row and lets, lets me output them. To do this, I had to make some change, subtle changes to the NPC script. So let's first talk about the changes I made to the NPC script. Then we'll get into the complex issue of the tables from the Dungeon Master's Guide. So the first thing I did was I added two switches to parameters. I needed to suppress the blank line at the, normally I put a blank line between NPCs. Well, I don't want to do that because I'm, I'm calling this script by the villain script and I want to suppress that and then put that out by the villain script. So I have a switch, no blank line, which basically goes down and uh, tells it if no blank line, then I'll put a blank line, basically. The switch uh, 4DK, uh, sorry, the switch 4D6K3, that's 4D6 keep 3 or 4 die 6 keep 3 syntax for die rolls. So this one here, what we do is we, the code to generate the um, attributes for, all, for each attribute, it calls this method here, which then, based upon this switch, calls either 4d6 keep 3 uh, or 3d6. 3d6 is the easiest. This one was rewritten to use measure object, but it we, we generate the random abilities, we roll the die rolls, and then we measure object to summit. I know that's kind of a strange way to do that, but the reason I did that is because this, uh, for the 4d6, I measure object and I want the minimum and the sum, so then it gets the sum minus the minimum, so that gives you the 4d6 keep 3 process. So that's the major changes to that. There was a typo in one of the uh, scripts that were there, but now let's talk about the tables for the Dungeon Master from the Dungeon Master's Guide and they get moderately complicated and I thought about doing it the same way I did for the uh, NPC generation which by the way the NPC still works just the same dot NPC 5e will generate an NPC but he doesn't have the objectives, methods, and weaknesses, and he rolls the 3d6 by default. And uh, I can say generate two of those, and they'll generate those. And I can even actually uh, the switch um, 4d6, 4d6 keep three, and that means he'll roll four dice and keep dice three. But we'll, let's get into the villain. So the villain. Rather than doing these as simple text files, because they just got a, there was a little twists and complications to that, 
I decided I would define an XML. So this XML file, what happens is it contains the top, the root uh, or document element is the attributes. An attribute contains, attributes is a list of attribute. So there are three attribute in here. We'll go through how they work. An attribute has a description and then it has a series of, then it has an options. And an option contains a list of option. And an option has a description. And then it recursively has a list of options. So in theory, this should, this will handle, if I can, I can keep nesting down. But this is how I handled the nested tables that are basically what's in the Dungeon Master's Guide. So that you, each option has a description and so you could you can go down you could go down additional layers so I could go down but this is how it handled it the easiest one to look at is the last one which is the weakness because they just have an option con, options containing a series of option records so it's an attribute <clears throat> containing a description and then a each then a set of options with a <laughs> that contain option records and so it just selects this but what it what happens is if they have deeper ones they get through so though this allowed me to come back and generate this fairly easily so let me show you how this is the this is the guts of it so let let's let's show what this is let's script out skip down the the villain is actually fairly simple We'll come back to the get random option node in a second. So the first thing we have to do is we have to read in, it reads in the villain.xml file. Then for each at, uh, that then for each NPC that we've been specified as the parameter, how many to do, we can um, do a bunch of those. So then it this is where this line here is where it calls the NPC and it says I want no blank line and I want to use the 4D 6 K 3 switch so that I'm using 4 die 6 so the attributes of a villain are a little bit higher than the no attributes of a normal NPC then for each okay now this is where we go through so we read in the into the attribute list here the villain XML then for every the attribute list contains a, a list of at, uh, at this is the outer root element so this is the variable with the root element and then what this gives us the list of attributes so for every attribute that's inside here we initialize an a uh, an array called a row and we pull out description which is the description then a row adds adds the the all the random options so this calls random option which will be, be up there which can return actually which actually returns an array then we format a row out that's my variable names are not very good for this but and I format it so that I the description goes the first parameter puts a colon and then it calls the a row and uses the join operator to join them with a space dash space that's how we get um, come up to a villain well, let's just generate a villain let's just do that villain. notice how these this one here the objective is immortality steal a planar creatures essence this this one here put this piece of code here is generated by the join so the key to this is it calls get random option so this uses the attribute options so if I split the screen vertically and we look back at the XML so the attribute gets us to the objective and schemes then here's the options so this is what it's it's calls it with this options here so it, it 
it calls the we have the an attribute and this is the options array we call this so the first thing we the options array is uh, it contains the options array contains a set of options and this was interesting I didn't I hadn't seen any examples where you can actually pass in an XML node or an XML it's a list of XML elements in there so what happens is node option oh, will a yeah, doorbell affected a visitor sorry um, node options these are the options so that we have the options and we we get the list of options from this and we pipe it to get random which selects one of them so then we can we first off so like for example if it selected the first one we would have this option here and we immediately can pull out the description and then if there is an options record in here it recurses so I call get random option with the options so it's very simple and it's will handle nested options as deep as you want because it will just go through uh, recursively generating this so then when this is finally done it pulls it back out it puts the description through it and then outputs the file so that's um, that's how I did the, the script so if you have any comments about this I'd love to hear what you've done with this and what you think of this approach Thank you. I look forward to learning what you think about this video. Let me know in the comments below. I appreciate all your comments. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up. If you don't like the video, give me a thumbs down. I appreciate both forms of feedback. If you're new here and would like to subscribe, you can click on the icon on the left. If you're interested, there's more content on the right.